So the next department we'll talk about is the Department of Veterans Affairs, and that's led by Secretary Eric Shinseki and Acting Assistant Secretary and Chief Information Officer Stephen Warren, and they have as their charge the uh, health and welfare of our nation's veterans. Now, the VA is frequently one of the few agencies that actually gets appropriations bills, and they also were not subject to the sequester. So that is good news for those of you who are looking to sell into the VA. Um, unlike many other agencies that have actually seen budgets decline, you can notice there's a pretty big spike here for the VA this year. Uh, the FY14 request was about $600 million more than the FY13 appropriation. Um, despite the size of this increase, however, the actual uh, amount of spending on DME has decreased, and uh, there's actually been um, uh, some issues that have come to light. In actually June 2013, Romano Moschetti, he's the uh, Deputy CIO for Information Resource Management, uh, he noted that up to that date, they had only executed less than 50% of their planned development spending to that date. So they uh, were lagging far behind in the development of the new systems that they had scheduled for this year. So uh, I'm sure many of us are aware of some of the troubles that VAIT has had in the past. Looks like some of those struggles are still continuing at the department. So as in most agencies, the VA spends the lion's share of its IT dollars, um, nearly two and a half billion on IT infrastructure. And that is an infrastructure that is geographically distributed across the United States, um, primarily through the VHN's, uh, VHA's uh, Veterans Integrated Service Networks, or VISNs. There's 23 of those. And then the Veteran, uh, Veterans Benefits Administration's Claims Processing Centers. So many of your customers are actually going to sit in those locations. They'll set, sit in um, VISN CIO headquarters, or um, you'll find them in... Um, uh, VBA, uh, regional processing, or uh, regional centers. Um, but rest assured that most of the actual purchasing decisions actually get centralized up here at headquarters under Stephen Warren or with the, um, the uh, Technology Acquisition Center, which has locations both up in Eatontown, New Jersey, and really down in Austin, Texas. And uh, the Technology Acquisition Center has two IT groups that um, you probably uh, really want to learn about. Uh, the they're, they provide significant assistance to VA program offices. So the first is the Program Advisory Services Group, and they provide post-award support to VA program offices um, to ensure that awarded procurement actions actually meet performance measures and adhere to contract requirements. The second group is the Rapid Response Service Team, and that provides assistance to VA program offices in conducting pre-acquisition market analysis, product sourcing, government cost estimates, and other applicable requirements for technology acquisitions. And here you see the organizational structure of that Office of Information and Technology. Now, something that is unique to the VA compared with all other federal agencies is that the CIO here actually has statutory authority over his IT budget. That means that Congress directly appropriates it to him. No other federal CIO is in that position. And that was done in part to address some of the problems that Tom mentioned plaguing the VA IT systems in the past, and it has had some success there. Now, obviously, one of the key offices here is the Virtual Lifetime Electronic Record, or VLR, Program Management Office, which is developing an integrated solution with the DOD. And that's one of the key VA projects around developing an electronic record to track service members' personnel and medical records and ensure that that information is duplicated across VA systems. Now, here are the top vendors reported by the VA spending data to date in FY13. But before I discuss any of these, I do want to point out one pretty important trend in VA contracting. Now, I'm sure some of you are aware that the VA really does prefer to work with veteran-owned businesses, particularly SDVOSBs in their contractual work. Now, it's a program they call Veterans First. And as an aside, IMIX does have a strong group of SDVOSB partners we can put you in touch with. Now, working with some of those great veteran-owned small businesses can give you an excellent foot in the door at VA. Now, of the top contractors here, note that Systems Made Simple, Longview International, and Thundercat Technology are all SDVOSBs. As far as relevant specific VA vehicles you should know about, Transformation 21 Total Technology, much better known as T4, is a major VA systems engineering contract, and that's where you're going to find most of your SIs and most of your major development projects. Now, we may see an increasing amount of hardware purchases coming through the T4 vehicle as well, so definitely look out for that for hardware vendors. 
The VA also makes heavy use of SOUP4 and GSA Schedule 70 when it comes to IT product acquisitions, and IMIX, of course, has a strong presence on both of those vehicles. So let's talk about some of the overall trends and drivers for the VA. And uh, obviously one of the biggest is the information sharing that's going to occur between the VA and the Department of Defense. Now, that's been somewhat um, put up in the air because of DOD's decision to pursue its own electronic health record. And it's actually left the uh, future of the interagency program office that was developed maybe a, a little bit up in the air. Um, we still expect to see a significant funding devoted towards enhancing information sharing, but exactly how that gets done is really going to remain a question for the time being. Now, another major driver for VA is mobility, and that's because about 25% of its workforce is actually a mobile workforce. And that ranges from everyone like the doctors and nurses that will travel to meet veterans' health needs to um, the logistics management workers that might travel from hospital to hospital to check out the, uh, the stocks of, of the necessary medications. And along with mobility, uh, VA has also really pioneered telehealth to help it reach rural veterans and uh, other systems that will really put vets health care in, uh, in their own hands. And, you know, this is really, uh, this is a key point. It's a huge goal for the department to make veterans aware of the benefits and options that are actually available to them. Uh, and there's been a big push to develop systems over the past few years that will actually support that goal. Now, uh, another major issue that we've all heard about is the backlog of disability claims. Uh, VA has been working to reduce those claims, uh, but that still is a challenge and a problem for the department. Um, <clears throat> another major thing to note, another major trend within VA is they've actually, actually added thousands of new workers over the past few years. And as a result, they've actually seen, uh, I believe it was a 15% increase in the amount of licenses that they're having to issue for software products across the board. So expect to see that to somewhat rise. Um, <clears throat> another major, uh, major initiative of theirs, in an attempt to rein in infrastructure spending, they are looking to virtualize existing servers or, and, and obviously to do the data center consolidation across the board. They really have a virtualization first approach. Um, so they would rather make use of their existing infrastructure that they already have rather than looking to uh, expand what's, uh, what's already there. Uh, and, of course, last but not least, uh, I'm sure we've all uh, read several months ago there was the breach into VA systems um, and actually access of, of you know, veterans' uh, health information. So cybersecurity remains a huge, huge concern for this department, probably more so than most. And the fact that they've got uh, you know, those increasing budgets means that they've got a significant amount of money to go towards those cybersecurity solutions that they need to protect their networks. Uh, now on to the first uh, program that we'll talk about. Uh, this is the Interagency 21st Century Core Investment. And this was really uh, originally slated to uh, fund the development of the integrated health record between uh, VA and DOD. Now, despite the fact that DOD is pursuing its own strategy, uh, both Secretary Shinseki and uh, Secretary of Defense Chuck Hagel have stated their uh, continued commitment towards enhancing data sharing. So I don't actually expect to see a defunding of this investment. Uh, instead, what's more likely is that we'll see a reprogramming of this funding used uh, to update uh, VA's VISTA electronic health record for the time being until DOD actually uh, comes to a decision on what health record platform it would like to adopt. Now, at that point in time, you may actually see what, what they'd like to have is a common application that will sit on top of both of those systems, both VISTA and whatever uh, DOD um, uh, elects as its health record system, so that you have a single point of access to get information from both of those systems. So this investment will likely to continue to receive a significant amount of funding going forward, um, and I would expect development work would actually start to ramp up once uh, DOD comes to a decision on its health record system. So obviously major plays here in uh, middleware and, and um, SOA implementation, and records management, and data and information management, and of course obviously as with everything else, cybersecurity. The next investment up here is the interagency 21st century OneVet. That's really aimed at developing internal systems within VA to share information throughout the agency and improve veterans' experiences when they need to interact here. OneVet requires a pretty significant CRM solutions to monitor all veteran interactions with the VA, and it's also looking at creating additional online forms 
uh, for education and pension applications, expanding web and event notifications of events in a veteran's area, and it's also looking to bolster VA knowledge management in order to better provide for veterans' care. OneVet is also doing a few other sort of miscellaneous things. It provides funding for ICAM systems across the VA, and it also modernizes the department's telephony infrastructure. And the last VA program that we'll, we'll talk about this morning is the Medical 21st Century My Healthy Vet. So uh, think of this investment as the third part of the triumvirate with the two uh, previous programs that we mentioned. The first is going to provide the health record for the veteran. The second investment provides the uh, record of the veteran's contact with the VA. And this investment, My Healthy Vet, uh, really provides the vet with, with access, uh, access to that information in a fashion that's easy for them to download and receive that information um, when they need it, wherever they need it. It's a huge goal to ensure that uh, a veteran's medical information doesn't solely reside on a local medical center, um, but is really accessible uh, wherever they are in the continental United States. Now, you may also hear folks at the VA discussing the blue button. Um, that's essentially the web application that allows the veteran to um, download and access a lot of the information and, and to have the interaction that they need to have with um, VA medical professionals. Uh, they can actually log on online and manage a lot of their health care that way. Um, <clears throat> So this effort is going to require, obviously, web application development, case management, and customer relationship management tools. And it's going to have a high level of visibility within the department. 